Well, good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing this morning? Good. That was, that was kind of lame, but that's, I'll let it slide. Um, as you might know, remember me, I've been up here a couple, three times, and so I've enjoyed being up here, so Kyle invited me back, and you guys said it was okay, so that was good. <laughs> I'm uh, Reverend Randy Johnson. I'm from the Michigan District. I'm the assistant to the president for CMMF, which we ain't going into because that takes too long to explain. I just come up and try to help out whenever I can. So I always enjoy, enjoy coming to Newberry because it's, my wife and I are quite water, waterfall enthusiasts. We've been doing it up almost every year for the last four years, coming up to the UP and just waterfalling. <laughs> People misunderstand sometimes things it's waterfowl thing, especially when I'm wearing a camouflage mask. <laughs> I'm trying to hide from you today. No. I just thought it was fitting to have that up here in the UP to have a camouflage mask. So. Um, I only wear it when I'm within six feet of you. It's part of my protocol from the Michigan District I must follow. So other than that, I will sanitize as often as possible to make sure that nothing gets done and uh, to you, from me anyway. And um, we will do the same thing that Kyle's been, Pastor Kyle's been doing. Uh, I will place the wafer in your hand. If you'll hold it like this, I'll kind of drop it in your hand and I will kind of hand you the cup as well. So please keep that in mind as well. Also, I'm Along along my wife, she's hiding in the back. She's the one with the mask on too, so I make her do it too. <laughs> if I have to, you do, she does too. So she's sitting way in the back, back down there. <laughs> no, we, we're social distancing. <laughs> we're trying that out, see how that works. We're gonna do a divine service for this morning, so please keep that in mind as we go through that, and I will do my best to uh, Make sure that it's done as well as possible. You have to remember, though, that I don't have a church, so I haven't done services for about three months now, except I did it last week, and it went pretty good, so I'm pretty happy, so hopefully I'll do the same thing here. All right, so let's begin this morning with our opening hymn, Lord of Glory, You Have Brought Us.
Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive prayer and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because your abiding presence always goes with us, keep us aware of your daily mercies, that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated for the reading of the word. Our Old Testament lesson comes from us, for the, oh, Jeremiah chapter 20. O oh Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For wherever I speak, I cry out. I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, 
There is in my heart as if it were burning fire shut out in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him. Say all my close friends, watching for my fall, perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take our ref revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Be Our epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 23. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. Do not Present your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, for your members to God as instruments for righteousness, for sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the Father to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were freed in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time? From the things which you are now ashamed. The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and it ends, eternal, and ends in eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but for the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents, and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is not enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. 
Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. For are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And are not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone acknowledges me before men, I also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now make confession of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. May you see it as we sing our gracious God, you send great blessings, 782.
grace, mercy, and peace be to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. All the texts that I read, I'm going to read another one, because this is actually what my sermon text is on. It's 1 John 3 verses, well, it's actually verses 11 through 18. I sent him the wrong one. So don't blame whoever did the thing. Pastor Kyle, it's my fault. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was the evil one, murdered his brother, and why he did, why he murdered him, because his own deeds were the evil and his brother's righteousness. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and yet closes his heart against him, how does God love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed or in truth. Like it says, what's in your DNA? You know, cops have been using the DNA for a long time to catch criminals. But you know what? In our day and age, everybody's using DNA, right? We're taking that DNA and we're using it to find out our family history, right? How, where we came from, whether it was Europe or Africa or Asia or you name it, we can find out our whole history just in our DNA. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Well, what about our spiritual DNA? Let's think about that for a moment. Spiritual DNA. Hmm. Who did we get that from? Where do we, where does that come from? How do we look at that? Well, let's think about it for a moment. We have to go all the way back to Garden of Eden, yeah. We have to go back to Adam and Eve. And you know what? Our DNA is also a little bit, maybe more than we like to admit, kind of like Cain's DNA. You know, the guy who killed his brother. But we also, maybe our DNA is a little bit more like Jesus than you and I might realize as well. So we have to think about that DNA project. Now, I have to take my wife out, to, wife out to lunch today because of what I'm going to say next. DNA in her family is very, very interesting. It has nothing to do with her, where she came from. She's a mix of all kinds of different DNAs, different ethnicities. But they have a thing called the Dolly DNA. That's her maiden name, Dolly DNA. I call it the Dolly DNA because her parents are like an accident waiting to happen. The father is walking down the road, one, or walking down his, his grassy knoll one day in front of his house and falls and shatters his ankle. My mother-in-law is holding on to a nice big black lab, and the black lab decides to wrap its foot around and pull her legs out from under, and she shatters her wrist. And the list goes on and on and on. But then you have my wife, who is from that DNA family. And it seems like everything that can go wrong with her goes wrong. She had to have wrist surgery because she has carpal tunnel. She had to have her gallbladder removed because, you know, all of her family has her gallbladder removed. And the list goes on and on and on. But what about our DNA? How do we stack up to DNA? What does that mean for you and me? Well, let's think about that for a moment. I think I keep breathing on this thing. Hopefully those on Facebook are not mad at me. But as we look at this DNA, we have to understand that as we look at the text I read today, we have to also look at the fact that it's not just our actions, like Cain killing Abel physically. It says also that anyone we hate, we're committing murder in our heart. 
I don't know about you, but when I first read that many, many years ago, I kind of went, whoa. I mean, just my thoughts? Think about that for a moment. Think back when you were a young kid. Did you ever say to your mom or your dad or both, I hate you. You're making me stay home. Or you took my car away. Or you took my bicycle away. Did you ever say that? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty bad, isn't it? When you think about it in the context of this, for a week? Oh. I just had two identical twins. Then I noticed something here, just, just to get off topic for a split second. You guys were formed in 613, or you celebrated your 75th anniversary in 613, 2010. My daughters were born on 613, 1983. Friday the 13th, 1983. What a surprise that was. I just thought that was kind of comical that you formed on the same year of my birthday, my daughters. But as we get back to this DNA thing, and we get back to how we are, and how we have murder in our hearts, let's go a little bit more serious, thinking about what's happening in our country right now. All the people, all the anger, all the frustration, all the racial tension in our country. But think about it. If you were slaves, in their terminology, not in our terminology, and we did nothing, that's just like murder. We must do something. We must step forward in faith. Christ's people are called all races, nations, all nationalities, all colors. It doesn't matter. We're to love them all. I mean, love them so much that we put them first. That's hard, isn't it? In a me first mentality, in a world that says me first. How about you're coming into an, into an emergency room, you're hurt pretty bad, you're bleeding, you're terrified, you're scared. Somebody comes in that's not quite hurt as bad as you, and you say, no, no, let them go first, I can wait. Are you ready to do that? Mm. I don't know. Isn't God asking a little bit much of us to put our lives last? Oh, wait a minute. Didn't Jesus, didn't Jesus put his life last by taking up the cross for us? Think about it. He has, he has taken up that cross. He suffered and died for each one of us. He put himself not first, but last. He took all the sins of the world and placed them on himself. He took our sins, our words that cause hurt, our actions that cause hurt. Our words, according to Scripture, even cause us to be more like Cain than we like to admit, and even murderers in God's eyes. But on the other side, Jesus gives us his righteousness, his forgiveness, his life that allows us now to be different, to be something more. Because we're powered not by ourselves, but by Jesus Christ. We are his children through the water of holy baptism. We are his, and through that baptism, he gives us the Holy Spirit that empowers us. All right, I have to ask you a question. Anybody bought an air fryer or an Instapot? You know what they are, right? Pretty cool things, aren't they? 
I mean, you can throw that stuff in there and it cooks quicker. And if you put it in an Instapot, man, it just, oh. You can take a tough old piece of beef and say, you know what, I would, you know, I would never buy this, but you put it in that Instapot and you throw it in there for so long, it comes out and it just falls apart. But here's the thing, you buy, you go out and you buy a brand new Instapot. You come home and you put your beef in it and you put it on it and you push the button and you stare at it. Nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. What's wrong? Why won't this thing work? What did I forget to do? What? Who said it? Plug it in, yeah! Because unless you plug that appliance into the power source, it's not going to work. You kind of know where I'm going with this, don't you? When you're plugged into Jesus, you have the greatest power source of all time. He is plugged in. When we're plugged into him, when we come to his worship, when we come to his holy supper, when we have all this brought into us, we have the greatest power on the earth and above the earth. It's in us. It's there for us to use, to live off of, and to be different. Did you catch towards the end of what I read? Read it on again. But we know that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? So Jesus is not all just words, is he? He's action. He's all about action. His action in his resurrection, or his death and his resurrection, his action in our baptism. His action in our Lord's Supper today has all been freeing things for us. So he tells us, don't just talk the talk, but walk the walk. In other words, do something. Be a friend to your neighbors. Be a friend to the people down on the street that are further away. Be a friend to the person in the grocery store. Start learning, start interacting, start sharing what Jesus has shared with you. This gift of life, this gift of forgiveness, this gift of eternal life he has given to each one of us. It's what we have to hold on to. It's a gift that he gives to everyone. Some just don't know it yet. And because you know it, and because you live it, now you can share that gift. The gift of forgiveness and the gift of eternal life. Walk in his joy. Walk in his forgiveness. Walk in knowing that you have eternal life and then share it with those around you. It's such a great gift. Give it to them as it was given to you. Someone gave it to you. Someone talked to you. Maybe you were brought all the way up from the cradle to the, where you are now, but that person brought you here. Maybe you bring them. Invite them. Walk with them. Because Jesus is walking with you every day and forgiving you every day, and loving you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. We rise now as we continue with the sacrament of the altar. Prayers. Oh, I'm sorry, prayers.
I told you I'd mess up at least once. Let us pray. O merciful Father, hear your people as they pray in the name of Jesus for this day. Trinity Lutheran Church, our nation and those who, who serve, those who need healing, those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, for all father figures in our lives, those coming to the Lord's table today, granting us all things according to your word and promise. Faithful God, when we are fearful of our enemies and weary of the struggle, you have been our shield and our strength. Grant to us the full measure of your grace to sustain us against all who are, are against us and help us to endure the trials and temptations of this mortal life and be faithful unto death. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, with your favor upon us, we pray you to help us in our fight against temptation and sin. Help us to live holy and righteous lives by the power of your spirit and keep us from surrendering ourselves to the slavery from which Christ has set us free. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, with the witness of the saints before us and the courage of your Holy Spirit within us, we pray you to bless Trinity Church, its mission and its people, its leaders, its pastors, giving them the abiding ability to meet the needs that arise as you do the work you have given them to do, proclaiming the saving truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, we remember those who serve. Bless the leaders of our country in all forms and levels of leadership, that they may be faithful to their service and honor Christ with an obedient life. Raise up those who will follow in their steps and serve in the years to come. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, give healing and strength to the sick, and all the afflicted in body of mind, and grant to those who struggle the gift of peace of mind and heart. Hear us especially for those named in our bulletin this day and those whom we name in our hearts as we do it now. Restore our nation, the world in health and livelihood, and preserve us from pestilence and fear. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, bless those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Celebrate another year of life of marriage. Continue to watch over them, providing for all their needs and granting them joyful celebrations. Grant them another year of life or marriage to come. If it be your will, so they may continue to cherish, grow, and abide in love and saving grace. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, we praise you for all godly men in our lives who have shown us the courage to love as you have loved us. Make them examples to us of your heavenly love, fatherly love, and help them to proclaim your mighty deeds in Christ and serve him. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, by your word and table, you continue to feed and nourish your people with all that will sustain our lives and faith. Help us to receive these gifts with faith and with repentance. Bring us to that day when all earthly divisions will cease and united in faith, we shall be one people before your altar. Lord, in your mercy. All these things, Father, and everything else for which we need, we pray to you to grant us for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died and rose and lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, 
into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord, 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 Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteousness judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness and life and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us in, as we pray in his name and he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, and I as you trade, took bread. When he broke it, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, and after giving thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We rise as we sing the Nam Dinmas. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you of your mercy. You would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. We're going to sing our last song, Give Thee But Thine Own, 781. I'll go in peace.